Hello and welcome, Rachel here from The Chill, bringing you a tutorial on making a wire work orchid. So I'm going to show you a few samples, the kits that are available and we'll get straight into it. So the two kits, they are available in rose gold, which is this colour, and silver. And you can obviously adapt it to the size that you would like. Now in the kits, you can choose the rose gold or the silver kits. You will need your tools to be available to make this. And it comes, all the materials come in little organza bag. So you've actually got your wires. You've got a choice um, of five beads in the kit. You've got a silver chain and the jump rings. They're all available on the website and we'll get straight into it. So I've cut a 25 centimetre length of 0.8 and I'm going to turn a loop with my round nose pliers at one of the ends like so. Now I've just got a lollipop stick that's got centimetre measurements to make life a little bit easier for me than fiddling around with the tape measure. So I'm going to pop that loop just below the measuring stick so that I don't take that loop into account. And I'm actually going to turn to make my first petal. I'm going to position my flat nose pliers so they sit just underneath the two, so the top is on the two. And I'm actually going to turn that around like so. Let's just show you that. And then I'm actually going to position my pliers parallel with the top of that loop and turn it there. So this, I know it can look a little bit confusing as you go, but this is actually petal one. So we're just about to start petal two and petal two is going to be slightly smaller. So we're going to be doing that at one and a half centimetres. Obviously, you can vary this depending on the size of the orchid. And I will put up measurement recommendations on screen for the next size as well. So I'm just turning a loop at the one and a half, like so. And then again, you marry up the base with the other one. So we're going to continue to make five of these alternating between two, then one centimetres until we have five. So now we've got one, two, three, four, five petals. Your base is the part with the loop. So I'm going to produce another loop, this end, and trim my wire. So I'm just going to produce a loop and just trim into that. So that we've got all of our petals complete. Now the next stage is to shape it but before we do that we need to pinch the tops and the bottoms with our chain nose pliers and it will accentuate the shape more. So you go around all of these but be very careful because it's plated wire you don't want to take the plate off the two, the top. You could always use sellotape or you could use your nylon jaw pliers, your straightening pliers if you have them. So we pinch all of those all the way around. And now the next stage is actually shaping our leaves. Now to shape the leaves, I'm using a jump ring mandrel but you can also use a Sharpie pen. So each petal, you will actually pop around the Sharpie pen or the jump ring mandrel and you bring both ends together. And that's how they come out. Now you may want to use the shorter part or the thinner part of your jump ring mandrel for the next one. So again, you bring both ends together on the mandrel and you continue shaping 
all the way around with each of those petals. So here is our flower that's now been formed and I'm just going to gently hammer to work harden and maintain the shape. This isn't essential if you don't have this in your tool collection, it's just an added bonus to maintain its shape. Now, the middle one is going to be further apart from every at the base, but this will sort itself out later on. And the next stage is to weave. And what I'd recommend is that you weave these four petals and you leave this one till last. And I'll explain that in a little while. Now our next stage is to weave our petals so they look like this. Now I'm going to show you how to do that and give you some top tips along the way. So first of all, how to secure your wire. So I'm going to do this small petal next and you want to have a little tail that fits under your non-dominant hand and then do four wraps on the tip of your petal. So I've cut a one metre length of 0.3 millimetre wire. So you may wish to sort of separate that a little bit for now so it doesn't get in the way and we can put that right after. So we do four wraps on the tip. We will cut that tail off after. Now we're working in a figure of eight weave. So we're now gonna take this and bring it under and over. So that's under, and then we're going to do four wraps this side. You might find it easier to clamp with something like nylon jaw pliers, so it helps you to get a little bit of grip onto the flower. One, especially when it's quite small, it's quite difficult to work in the gaps. So we've done four wraps on this side and now we're going to go under in your figure of eight and over and do four more wraps. Now that's my top tip is to stabilise it, is to use something like your nylon jaw pliers. The other thing is as it starts getting closer is bring the ends in. Now your wire will start to slip when you get closer to the end. So try and hold it in place as you're weaving and you might want to do two one side and two the other as you're going. So let's just show you a little bit more. One, two, three. It's not great for your nails, it really isn't great for your nails, but I tend to use a cuticle oil for mine um, because they tend to snap right, and then figure of eight and bring it over to the other side so do pop me a note in the comments and let me know how you're finding this so far so we continue with that weave until we've completed the next petal You'll start with a fresh one metre length for the next one. So leave this one till last and work these two next. OK, so we've done all of our four petals and notice to keep these close at the base. Otherwise, you'll end up with a big gap in the center. Now I've brought together those petals and now you're doing the last one it'll give you opportunity to just shape that. Now these loops at the bottom will be overlapped anyway at the next stage so you just continue doing the final petal in exactly the same way. So we've woven 
at Orchid and just a few final top tips on finishing and cutting your 0.3 millimeter wire. So I've still got my tails on there. You need your cutters and you always cut with the flat side against the wire you're cutting. So I tend to pull it up a little bit and actually cut into it. And likewise for the other tail down here. Be careful not to cut into your weave, but it's really important the finishing off so that there's no nasty edges against the skin. So feel on top of the flower, and I you can hear that bit sticking out, and just gently guide that tail with your pliers so that it sits into the weave. And do the same down here, is always do a check all the way around and make sure there's no rough edges. So our final stages are to make this centre stamen here and to add the gemstone and how to secure them on the back. So cut a 24 centimetre length of 0.8 millimetre wire and you can sort of eyeball your middle point. And particularly with the small orchid, you don't really want any big um, curves in this one. So I'm gonna work more towards the tip of my pliers. So I'm just gonna make a little curve there. And then I'm gonna actually turn that out. So put my chain nose pliers in turn that out either side like so and then I'm just going to make a couple of gentle curves sorry I went slightly off camera there some gentle curves and again just bring them out slightly by pinching the side of the end of the curve. Now you could just leave it at that if you wanted to, or you can just make a final one. Let's move those out of the way. Okay, so you've got something relatively petite, and it's like a little frill. So I'm actually gonna pinch it together I've got these ends together and we're now going to secure it to the orchid so we want these two holes to overlap now you see you've also got a hole in the center here that's where we're going to bring back one of the wires now here is my orchid center point I'm going to bring both wires together and I'm going to push those wires through that hole there and pull. Now this is a slightly tricky bit. So we've got the two wires here. I've bent one of the wires back and I've popped it through that hole in the center and you actually want to keep pulling that until you don't have any of this curve left the most difficult thing is not putting this out of shape so we've got one wire at the back and we've got one wire through the center so we're first of all going to deal with a wire at the back so we're going to cut it down to about just over a centimetre tail. And then we're going to use our round nose pliers and start rolling the loop or rolling a loop to secure this in place. Now the first loop will sit right at the side of the second loop. So hopefully you can see that. So you keep doing that until it's nice and tight. And finally, before we shape the leaf and put our chain on, 
we've got this little nugget here and we're going to pop a bead on one of your gemstone beads six or eight millimeters is ideal so that covers the little hole that you had again cut just above a centimeter tail and we're going to do the same thing and we're going to actually form a little loop so start turning your pliers and the loop will sit behind the other one now don't do as I've just done and start it too small because it makes it more difficult <laughs> so there you go now finally we just want to actually put some shape into our orchid to put the shape in I'm actually going to just with my fingers just bend that up slightly so that it enhances itself over the bead. Now I like a little bit of movement so either with the sharpie pen or with your jump ring mandrel is just work round and just hold it and just bend it back. Now also if you've got one petal that's bigger than another I'll just show you my top tip so with this hair comb, you could get away with a long one down there and I've curved that one over. So you can do lots of things. So if you've got one that's predominantly bigger, then just put some movement in it. So there's our final piece. And now we just pop a jump ring through the top there. And if it's difficult for you to get in there, then you could perhaps even use your round nose pliers just to make a slight indentation and then you can pop your chain through it so this is what it looks like so with this one you've got the jump ring at the top and the chain hey hope you found that useful pop me a note in the comments and let me know if you're going to be giving this a try and even better do share a photograph of what you've made and my hashtag is Vichil. So let me know in the comments, are you a beader? What's your favourite thing to do? We'd love to hear from you. And if you need any more information, just drop me a message. Thanks so much for joining me.